Hi everyone, I'm John Zedlewski. Thanks so much for coming to join us at NVIDIA's first AI and Data Science Summit. We've got a fantastic slate of technical sessions today. They're gonna to dive into everything from speeding up your data prep and ETL pipelines to scaling up graph analytics, taking machine learning models to the next level of accuracy, or integrating with vector search and large language model pipelines. But we really wanted to start off at, at a little bit of a higher level before diving into the technical details and talk about what do we even mean when we're saying accelerated data science? How can we incorporate accelerated data science into the tools we use and build on every day? And why are we so confident that this is the future direction of the data science industry and practice overall? Well, I think that last question is maybe the easiest to answer. Uh, the demands for data and compute in data science models and prep and data prep are just growing at an incredible pace. We look at projects like teams building recommender systems and they start off by saying we've got tens of millions of users and hundreds of thousands or even millions of pieces of content. We wanna take the cross product of those two groups and look at every possible interaction where you really quickly get to a, a data set of trillions of items where you have to prep all the data, run a model over it, and return those results as quickly as possible so that users can get the freshest possible experience. Or look at something like a large language model where you know, not too long ago, we thought a billion parameter model was more in the realm of science fiction. But today, so many of us are working very practically in our day jobs with 7 billion parameter or 70 billion parameter or even larger models that have to do just an absolutely massive amount of compute to generate each new token or each new sentence that we're going to put out. Or look at very traditional applications of data science like forecasting, where it wasn't that long ago that people could do monthly inventory forecasts. And we all know it moved to weekly and daily. Now we want hourly and real-time forecasts so that we can handle any snags and logistics, sudden changes in demands or stock out issues. The demands on each of those models is growing, but the demand to run them frequently is growing even faster. So the data, data and compute needs just keep skyrocketing. You can tell the same story over and over for all of these fields, whether you're talking about fraud detection and billions of credit card transactions going on around the country every day, genomic analysis or cybersecurity, where you might want to apply a rich model to every single packet going through a network. The needs for compute and data just keep growing. But unfortunately, Moore's law and single thread CPU performance have not been able to keep up with that growth. We can't live in a world where every year we just double the size of our data center in order to keep up with the fact that our model uh, needs to deal with twice as much data as it had as before. It wasn't that long ago that we could rely on really fast growth of CPU compute each year, but that those speeds have tapered off and are growing at more like 10% annually rather than the 50% we used to see. But the good news is that accelerated computing has continued to scale. We do see that 1.5x or greater increase every year. And in fact, if you look at key applications like large language model inference, we've seen a 1000 fold increase in large language model inference over the past 10 years. So this is not just keeping up with, but really exceeding what was the promise of Moore's law. And the way that happens is not a secret. It's about co-evolving hardware and software together for specialized applications. Rather than building a generic platform with a static instruction set that might have been decided 30 years ago, so we can still run PowerPoint 95, we can really rapidly add new hardware features, change instruction sets, and bring everything along by having a full stack of software that goes along with it. All of this is about targeting specialized applications, AI, data science and data processing and building the best platform for those rather than building the most generic possible platform. But again, as we iterate quickly and have new hardware features coming out every single year, it wouldn't be possible for developers to engage this ecosystem unless we had a full stack platform, which is why NVIDIA has always been about being a full stack company. We start from building these hardware building blocks with the best in class GPUs and NICs and InfiniBand switches and NVLink, increasingly CPUs like the Grace generation. But then we have to pair that together with these low level performance libraries that allow you to access IO at incredible speeds or to orchestrate on top of GPU clusters. All of this has to also allow developers to enter the stack wherever it makes the most sense for them. 
if you want an application framework like Monai for medical imaging or Nemo for large language models, you might be able to deploy that in a large scale application and barely write any code at all because the entire stack is built together. Or maybe you want to come out of the acceleration library level and have your Python code be incredibly accelerated on this platform by using a rapid data science stack or, or work even lower level in CUDA C++ level. It's really core to our philosophy that we want to allow developers to engage with stack at any level that makes the most sense for you. And that's what we've been building for, for these years. But when we think about applying this to data science in particular, we usually think about a diagram like this one. And so, you know, I, I was a hands-on data scientist for many years, and I've managed data scientists for many years after that. And for so much of that time, my life looked like this timing diagram over on the left. I think we all know this feels you come in and you've got a great idea. I'm going to merge in a new data set that's going to add some features and make my model better than it was yesterday. You get started and you write that code and then you kick off the job and then you wait. You take a coffee break and you read some docs and maybe a code review and the clock just keeps ticking. And then you know what? You forgot to add one of the features you wanted to add. So now it's time to do a couple minutes of coding, restart the job, and then just wait again. It's an incredibly frustrating, slow iteration cycle when you have to wait an hour or more for each attempt to try a better model. And so often we end up making compromise by saying, we'll just try a tiny subset or slice of the data, but that can often lead to unrepresentative models and make it really unclear when we're making things better or not. So our mission from day one has been to build the absolute fastest platform for data science. It is the very first pillar of our accelerated data science strategy. And it's all about bringing everyone from this diagram on the left over to the diagram on the right, where you squash that waiting time down from a couple of hours to a couple of minutes. It allows you to try out so many different feature combinations, build a bunch of models, maybe do a hyperparameter sweep where you run 100 variants of the same model. The data scientist on the right here, who's able to try out dozens or more models the course of a day, is going to get better results than anyone who has to wait for hours for every single model iteration. And that's the world that we think is really critical to bring to every data scientist. So that's really the first pillar that motivated us, building the fastest possible data science platform in the world. But all of this only works if we build this as an end-to-end -end platform. So going end-to-end -end has been the second pillar of our idea of accelerated data science also from the beginning. You can start with a library like Rapids QDF, which provides a really friendly Pythonic interface to accelerate all of your data prep, ETL, featureization, merges, joins, all these core bread and butter operations that we do with data all day long. Or you could use that exact same hyper-optimized core, but from a Apache Spark context with the Rapids Accelerator for Apache Spark, where you can just take your Spark SQL code as it exists today without any code changes and see a massive speed up by switching over to, to GPUs. All of these same tools work too, even if you're, whether you're processing data in kind of a tabular domain or working with text data and curating data like in our Nemo Data Curator product for large language models. But we've got to go end to end and go from that data loading and ETL pipeline over to model training. And that means seamless interaction with PyTorch or TensorFlow or JAX or with your traditional machine learning models where we can accelerate all of those with the Rapids QML Pythonic interface to machine learning or graph analytics, which can work at a huge scale at incredible speeds with Rapids QGraph. Then I think many of us have had this experience too. And I think there's nothing more frustrating than building a fantastic model and learning you can't really deploy it in production because it's too slow at inference time. So we integrate all of this really closely with the Triton open source inference engine, which allows you not just to speed up deep learning models in deployment, but also to speed up traditional machine learning models like tree-based models, such as XGBoost or random forests and take them to the next level of performance. And all of this has to work too with the modern world of vector search and really doing rapid integration with uh, nearest neighbors and Rapids RAF provides an incredible product for accelerating those as well too. This is all unified together on top of NVIDIA AI Enterprise platform. And pretty much everything you see here is also completely open source and accessible. But it's really about building this end-to-end -end stack where everything can play well together. But even within an end-to-end -end stack, no one company is ever going to build every single data science tool we need. 
I, I know, I think every data scientist I talk to has a requirements.txt or a YAML file that lists a dozen or more, or sometimes even hundreds of libraries that they end up integrating that they use in their day-to-day -day data science work. So we're all about building together with the community to integrate with all these other projects. We have over 100 integrations with the rapid stack of accelerated data science tools already announced, ranging from integrations with cloud tools like uh, Google Cloud Vertex or Amazon SageMaker or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or just plotting tools that you use every day like Plotly or um, integrating with Dask for scale out. Building together with the community has been incredibly powerful for us and incredibly rewarding. We've seen over 350 GitHub different GitHub contributors already in the Rapid Stack, and we've been able to expand our sponsorship too and back projects like NumFocus or uh, the team behind XGBoost and continue growing the open source data science community, all while supporting that with this core Rapid Suite that plugs in this. But we want to be even more ubiquitous and we want to make it even easier for data scientists to incorporate accelerated data science into everything they do. And so we really wanted to take a look and build up a third pillar of our accelerated data science strategy. And the third pillar is all about meeting data scientists where they are today in the tools they use today. And when we think about tools that data scientists use today, of course, Pandas was first in our minds. It's unbelievably popular. I think at last count, we think there are somewhere in the order of 9.5 million Pandas users in the world. And the growth is, in downloads is just absolutely tremendous. It's sort of mind boggling that there are over a million GitHub repos that reference Pandas now. This tool is absolutely everywhere. And it ranges from you know, small data analyses we're doing on our individual desktops to massive production scale data analytics pipelines that we rely on for production. So we wanna make sure that every Pandas user now can take advantage of acceleration and not have to throw away their years and years of investment, their hundreds of thousands of lines of code when things get slow and when the data volume increases. So that's why we're really excited to announce that today we're launching the Rapids Accelerator for Pandas. It brings zero code change acceleration to all of your existing Pandas code. You just flip on a command line flag or add in a small extension at the top of any notebook that you're running and your code immediately begins running faster on a GPU. The accelerator behind the scenes automatically handles data movement back and forth from CPU to GPU. So if your code integrates with some third party library that doesn't know anything about GPUs, we will automatically find a way to move the data at the time needed to that downstream library. It allows you to integrate with this huge ecosystem you use today, but take advantage of these incredible speed ups that we see too. You can see over here, we're looking at the standard uh, benchmark managed by the DuckDB team that looks at database-like operations done within Pandas. Just using this stock code and not modifying at all, the set of join queries for five gigabytes goes down from five and a half minutes on Pandas to being done in a second with the QDF accelerator. You can see really similar speed ups for advanced group by queries too. This allows you to have a unified workflow across your CPU and GPU, so you don't have to make any code changes when you move from say, doing initial development on a CPU on your laptop to moving to a GPU on your server. It allows you to maintain that unified code base. This is all open source and it's downloadable today. So please go to rapidsai slash pandas, try it out and we'd love to hear your feedback. It's a beta, but it's a really fully functional beta and something I think is gonna accelerate your pipelines already. This is a project we plan to support and invest heavily in for years to come. And we'll have formal NVIDIA AI enterprise, enterprise grade support for those who need that coming really shortly. But I, I want to take a little more detailed look at exactly what we mean when we say zero code change. So here we have the exact same analytics notebook on the left and the right, just analyzing a large data set of parking violations in New York City. You can see the only code change is that over on the right hand side, we load this one extension called QDF Pandas, and then we let it rip. All right, well, I, think, I hope you could see that the accelerated code on the right completes the entire notebook faster than we even get through that in the CPU-based example, faster than we even get through that very first cell of data preparation. 
So something that we think is going to be transformative, not just for individual data scientists working in notebooks, but also for all the large scale production pipelines that we have that are built in Python and really need to crank through massive amounts of code. So really, this is a, a key part of our strategy to meet data scientists where they are today and make sure we're accelerating the tools that you're already using. But again, we go end to end and we don't stop with just accelerating data prep. We're also excited to announce today our first new GPU backend for NetworkX. This is a really close collaboration with a fantastic NetworkX team for graph analytics. And the NetworkX library has been known for fantastic ease of use and for being a great tool for exploratory analytics for a long time now. But sometimes it does struggle to scale up when we get to a larger amount of data. By collaborating with our team, we've built a way to have a switchable backend that allows you just to flip on an environment variable and automatically take advantage of this NX QGraph plugin to speed up all of your graph analytics. Think something like a large scale between this centrality analysis can shrink down from two and a half hours to 14 seconds on GPU. We're starting with a launch of these three algorithms in the plugin, but we're gonna keep investing heavily here too. KuGraph has an amazing suite already of GPU accelerated algorithms. And this plugin is all about building a bridge between them and the network X world. So you're gonna see so many more of those KuGraph algorithms coming out over time and integrating with this backend. Huge thanks to the network X team for all their collaboration here with this. It's, it's a fantastic way to work together and it's an open source set of projects. But of course, we also know that not every data scientist just works in the Python and PyData stack all day long. So many of us rely on Apache Spark. In some ways, the Apache Spark uh, Rapids plugin for ETL has been our very first zero code change integration that we've had. And it's been out there providing tremendous acceleration to anyone doing Spark ETL or Spark SQL for years. But now we're excited to announce that we also provide support for Apache Spark ML. You can take operations in Spark like k-means that might have taken hours to run in this large data set and bring that down to just a little bit over a minute. Random forest, PCA, ridge regression, these are really bread and butter algorithms that I think many of us as data scientists use all day long, but they can get a little slow when they scale up to, uh, to large, large data set sizes. And bringing GPU acceleration to them means these again become something that is uh, barely a coffee break rather than something that you run as an overnight job. We're incredibly excited for the Apache Spark ML growth and incredibly excited for this overall initiative of bringing zero code change GPU acceleration to the data science tools you use every day today. But it's not just about saying that the libraries you've used for the past years are also gonna get faster. We know that acceleration has gotta be there too as we move into brand new application areas. And so many data scientists around the world are starting to build up more and more uh, work around large language model pipelines. These are massive scale data science problems where we often start with a data set where the scraping the entire internet is the scale of your input going into it. So we start with hundreds of terabytes of data in many cases and have to curate and analyze that data, train a model on it, deploy to inference. And in many cases, it gets even more complex as we move to the really powerful retrieval augmented generation frameworks that bring together embedding models and vector databases together with your large language model. These again are complex end-to-end -end pipelines and you need to solve them with end-to-end -end data science. So we're really excited to be able to accelerate parts of that pipeline with the tools that we have already released open source. Within NVIDIA, we have massive scale foundation model training going on every day starting with hundreds of terabytes of data. And we've been able to move all of those pipelines over to GPU-based tools for data preparation and analytics. That means that when you're deduplicating documents, quality filtering them, uh, removing junk from text that gets built up in these huge data sets, we can accelerate all of that in GPU. And we've been able to bring a um, number of server nodes we need to do that data prep down by a factor of five while speeding up the throughput by 12X just by adopting existing tools in QDF and DAS QDF that allow you to scale up and do all this large scale text work. We're seeing similar speed ups over on the deployment side when we speed up the process of building vector database indices and querying them to integrate with large language models for retrieval augmented generation. Rapids Wrap is an open source suite that plugs into many existing and emerging vector search solutions like FACE and Milvus, and you'll hear a lot more about that over the course of today's AI and Data Science Summit. So part of our pillar of meeting data scientists where they are is going with data scientists together as we're moving together 
into brand new application areas, areas that are growing at fantastic paces. And we're really excited to be part of that large language model journey. Now, all of this comes together on top of the NVIDIA AI Enterprise Suite. And this is really our way of saying, hey, we love that these are open source projects and they're gonna to continue to be open source and free and incredibly easy to download and install. But we know some of you have production pipelines and you wanna guarantee that there is a 24 seven support, support line that you can call. You wanna guarantee that your old releases have API stability and someone's keeping up with all the latest CVEs, security paths, anything there. And that's what AI Enterprise provides. It's a subscription-based service that allows you to have the highest level of enterprise-grade support for all of NVIDIA's data science stack and all of our related software. And to us, it also just means a promise that we're investing in this to be incredibly robust, reliable, and to scale with you for the long run. With that, I, I hope we've covered all the points that we wanted to get to to uh, start kicking off this AI and data science summit. We're so excited to be building as part of this great community of Pi Data and Spark Data, uh, continue to grow that ecosystem for these integrations. And we're thrilled with these major announcements we have around zero code change options for accelerating the data science tools you have today, as well as options for accelerating emerging applications like large language models and data curation and retrieval augmented generation. I hope you really enjoy the rest of the summit and I can't thank you enough for coming here to be part of it.